China has just entered a new era at sea. President Xi Jinping personally attended the commissioning of the Fujian, the nation's first electromagnetic catapult-equipped aircraft carrier, in Hainan province, according to Xinhua News Agency. This massive vessel marks a historic leap in technology, transforming China's navy into a force capable of global reach and precision operations. So what makes the Fujin so advanced, and why does it matter to the world? China's Fujin isn't just another carrier. It's a technological milestone that redefines what the country's navy can do. With a full load displacement of more than 80,000 tons, the Fujin is the largest and most advanced ship ever built in China. What sets it apart is its adoption of an electromagnetic catapult system, EMALS, a technology previously fielded only by the U.S. Navy. Instead of relying on steam or ski jump ramps like the older Liaoning and Shandong, the Fujin's catapults use electromagnetic energy to launch aircraft smoothly, with far greater precision and less strain on airframes. This innovation allows jets to take off with full fuel and ammunition, maximizing their range and flexibility for complex missions. It also increases the sortie rate, meaning more aircraft can launch and recover in shorter cycles, which greatly enhances efficiency. On deck, observers saw J-35 stealth fighters, J-15T heavy fighters, and the KJ-600 early warning aircraft positioned in sequence during President Xi Jinping's inspection. The presence of these aircraft confirms that the Fujin will operate as a fully integrated aerial platform capable of sustained air operations. The EMAL's design also improves reliability and energy management. By converting stored electrical power into magnetic force, it cuts down mechanical wear, reduces noise, and provides a steadier acceleration curve for each launch. Engineers have stated that electromagnetic catapults can extend aircraft service life while lowering maintenance costs. President Xi personally supported the decision to equip the Fujin with EMALS, reflecting China's confidence in its domestic industrial base. During his visit, he inspected the control tower, pilot house, and crew quarters, emphasizing not only the ship's performance, but also the quality of life for personnel. Altogether, the Fujin represents a decisive shift from imported designs to a self-reliant, high-tech flagship built entirely at home. A clear signal that China is moving into a new generation of carrier operations. The Fujin's commissioning officially places China in a three-carrier era, joining the Liaoning and Shandong. This trio marks a transformation in how the People's Liberation Army Navy conducts operations, from protecting nearby waters to managing activities across the open ocean. Experts cited by Global Times describe it as a shift from nearshore defense to far seas presence. The Fujian was commissioned at Sanya Naval Base in Hainan, the same port that hosts the Shandong. Having two carriers based there enables dual carrier operations in the South China Sea, an area with deep water and diverse weather conditions, ideal for complex training and real-world endurance tests. Operating together, these carriers can perform coordinated flight operations, support humanitarian or rescue missions, and conduct long-range patrols that require persistent air cover. At the ceremony, about 2,000 representatives from the Navy and shipbuilding institutions attended as president. She presented the PLA flag to the Fujin's captain and political commissar. That symbolic act underscored how far the Navy's structure has evolved. On deck, carrier-based pilots received direct encouragement from Xi to refine their skills and expand the Fujin's operational potential. Analysts like Zhang Junxi highlight three main leaps. First, aircraft can now launch with full payload. Second, the new system allows a much higher flight sortie rate. And third, with the KJ-600 on board, China can finally form an integrated air and sea network that merges offense, defense, and surveillance into one continuous operation. The significance extends beyond hardware. The Fujian allows China to sustain a carrier rotation cycle, one vessel in maintenance, one in training, and one on deployment, a standard practice among mature naval powers. Its introduction also boosts joint operations with destroyers, frigates, submarines, and replenishment ships, creating a balanced formation with strong defensive and support capabilities. In short, the Fujian doesn't just add another ship to the fleet. 
it completes a structural evolution. China now has the foundation to maintain continuous maritime presence far from home shores, a capability that expands national reach, secures vital sea lanes, and reinforces the country's role as a modern maritime power. Even as celebrations surround the Fujian's entry into service, attention is already turning to what comes next. Reports suggest that China's fourth aircraft carrier, and possibly its first nuclear-powered one, is under construction at Dalian Shipyard. Although the Ministry of Defense has not confirmed details, spokesperson Zhang Xiaojing stated in September 2025 that China's carrier program proceeds according to national security needs and technological progress. Why the push for more carriers? According to military analysts, three vessels meet only the minimum operational cycle, one deployed, one training, one in maintenance. Expanding the fleet ensures that China can maintain continuous readiness across multiple regions while modernizing older platforms. A nuclear-powered carrier would represent a profound leap in endurance and sustainability. Without relying on fossil fuel resupply, it could remain at sea for extended periods and generate ample electricity for energy-intensive systems like next-generation catapults, advanced sensors, and directed energy defenses. Such a design would align with the 2035 goal for full naval modernization and a global operational presence. The Fujian itself serves as a bridge to that future. It demonstrates the industrial maturity required to handle extremely complex systems, from integrated electric propulsion to advanced radar suites and flight deck automation. Each successful sea trial, beginning with the first in May 2024, has validated that China's domestic shipyards can design, assemble, and test equipment rivaling the best in the world. In a broader context, the Fujian's debut narrows the gap with U.S. Ford-class carriers, particularly in launch efficiency and energy management. It also accelerates regional innovation, prompting neighboring countries to upgrade their maritime technologies. Experts emphasize that future carriers will continue serving defensive and stability-focused missions, such as safeguarding trade routes, providing disaster relief, and supporting scientific expeditions. From a symbolic standpoint, each new launch underscores how rapidly China's shipbuilding ecosystem is evolving, from importing foreign designs to producing some of the most advanced vessels afloat. With the Fujian now commissioned and future platforms on the horizon, China has entered a long-term phase of technological refinement and sustained oceanic capability, a development that will continue shaping the global maritime landscape for decades to come. The commissioning of the Fujian marks more than the addition of a new ship. It's the embodiment of China's steady rise as a global maritime power. With electromagnetic catapults, next-generation aircraft, and President Xi Jinping's direct leadership, the Fujian represents both confidence and capability. Whether it becomes a model for future carriers or a symbol of a broader transformation, one fact is clear. The Fujian has officially set China's navy on a new technological horizon. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.